What's good? Brian Song here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. The iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and Pro Max, they've been pretty much out for about a week, and the rumor mills, they already want to talk about the iPhone 2020. But before we get started, Ting is the smarter choice for an affordable cell phone service. You'll pay fair price for the talk, text, and data that you actually use each month. Get $25 off your phone bill at brian.ting.com. Not Ting Tong. I know how y'all thinking. It's a $25 credit to try Ting Mobile at brian.ting.com. All right, let's get to it. And according to the latest note from Apple rumor analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, next year's redesigned 2020 iPhones will bring a new metal frame structure that takes us back to the days of the iPhone 4. That is easily really one of my favorite iPhone designs of all time. It was clean. It was sexy. And you can also see it was some of the inspiration behind the current iPad Pro design as well. Then Ben Geskin decided to drop a bomb on Twitter. And according to his sources, one of the 2020 iPhone prototypes has an even larger 6.7 inch display with Face ID and the True Depth camera system housed in the top bezel, similar to the design of the iPad Pro. And when you see that design, you can't really tell me that you're still okay with a notch. Now we've heard some of this before, I know this, and Ben Geskin helped reveal renders of what it could look like which is very nice, but Quo says the flagship iPhone's design will change significantly and the new device will feature a new metal frame that has more complex segmentation design, new trenching, and new injection molding procedures and a sapphire or glass cover assembly to protect the trench injection molding structure. But what do you all think about this new design? Because I would love it and it would also make sense to really kind of match that aesthetic closer to the iPad Pro as well so their products kind of feel like a family. And we've talked about the 2020 iPhone a whole lot and we've been expecting a major design change for the next year along with 5G compatibility and even a fourth 3D sensing camera lens on the rear for augmented reality and even improved camera features. We already know, look, Samsung has implemented their bokeh video effect with their live focus on the Note 10 and we could easily see that on the next iPhone as well thanks to this new sensor. But the new iPhone, it just came out and we're talking about the next one, but honestly, we're used to these rumor mills just firing right back up once the phone comes out. Now the iPhone 11 Pro's camera really did surprise me and I'm enjoying its extended battery life. So you can check out my full review and see everything I had to say. Plus, you know, you gotta check out my labor of love for me, my iPhone 11 Pro music video that I made with my buddy with just the iPhone 11 Pro and nothing else. It's just fun to be able to do that crazy over the top stuff and you know, mix it up once in a while. But iOS 13, it came out and yeah, it was buggy. Just a few days later, iOS 13.1 was released. It's out now and fixes some of those bugs, but some of my apps are still acting up a little. It's not a train wreck, but it's definitely better. In very important news though, we have to talk about emojis. I could have done it longer. Some of them have designed updates like the Octopus, which now has tentacle suckers and the squid doesn't have that siphon on its forehead because these issues just had to be addressed immediately. Now there's 59 new emojis that include the sloth, flamingo, there's butter and waffles, the yawn face banjo. Others will be available later this year, but there's no set date. Last year, the emoji updates came in October. Now I'm also in love with the new iPad OS. I almost have to get used to all the multitasking it can do with split screen for the same app. And then you have the group of floating apps on top of all that. You can just do so much more, but we'll see how much I actually end up using it long term. I'm going to dive into it even more. And for people that updated to iOS 13 on their Apple TV, first of all, it now features 10 new gorgeous underwater screensavers. And if you're an ocean lover like me, these just look incredible and are a welcome addition to Apple TV screensavers that are honestly super underrated. But you won't be able to download all of them at once, but you can set your screensaver download option to daily in the settings and they'll eventually all get downloaded. But you might find that your home button now works differently in iOS 13 and instead of the home button taking you back to your home screen, Apple decided to change it up and when you press it now, it goes to their own Apple TV app. It's something that I rarely use. So here's how to fix it for you. Go to your settings on the Apple TV, then go to remotes and devices, scroll down to the home button option click on the home button and it will change its functionality back to what you've been using for as long as you've been using the Apple TV. So see, I'm looking out for you. 
All right, I'm also working on my Apple Watch Series 5 review, but like many of us expected, there are very, very subtle changes from the Series 4 to the 5, thanks to the most recent teardown from iFixit. The internals are close to identical. There's the always-on display that doesn't look any different with the new tech in it that's really invisible to the human eye, according to iFixit. There's the new ambient light sensor under the OLED panel. The battery's actually slightly bigger than the Series 4, as in it's 1.4% larger if comparing the 44 millimeter models from the Series 4 to the Series 5. Now, like we expected, the Series 5 chip has the same CPU and GPU as the 4, so you're not getting a new processor inside, but the base storage has jumped from 16 gigs to 32 gigs. If only the iPhone could do the same thing and double in storage. What if it magically went from 64 to 128? I mean, I think that that would be a little more pro, like a little bit. Thanks again to Ting, the smarter choice for affordable cell phone service. You pay a fair price for the talk, text, and data that you actually use each month. If you use less, you pay less. It's that simple. The average Ting user pays $23 per month, and you can use Ting's bill estimator to calculate your rates. Ting offers nationwide LTE coverage on two networks, so the phone you already own will likely work with Ting. All you need is a SIM card. So get $25 off your phone bill at brian.ting.com. No, it's not Tong, but brian.ting.com for a $25 credit with Ting Mobile. All right, if you like this video, you know what to do. Thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my videos when they drop. And if you want to dive even deeper with the latest stories, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast. And I love your support for all my content. That's independent, patreon.com. All right, that's going to do it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and be safe. We'll see you.